today we are extremely privileged. We have with us Bernard Connolly, who was one of only four economists who directly anticipated and analysed the great financial crisis. He's also the author of this particularly brilliant book, The Rotten Heart of Europe, which I have uh, talked about many times, so regular readers will. I hope have read it by now. If you haven't, go out, get it and read it. But what we're going to start by talking about today is a subject which covered at some length in this, which is the European Union and specifically, should Britain be leaving the European Union? There's a big question for you. Yes, of course it should. And it should do that because the European Union is explicitly anti-democratic. It aims at eliminating the rule of law. It aims at instituting uh, initially a sort of crony capitalism state that would eventually but quite quickly transmute into a uh, bureaucratic socialist state. Um, it is oppressive. Um, it has inflicted enormous misery on all its subject countries, most obviously, of course, through monetary, uh, mm -hmm. monetary union, which was presented as an economic mechanism, but was always intended, uh, and we have a former Commission President, Romano Prodi, uh, to vouch for this, it was always intended to create economic crises which would push people into giving up more of their sovereignty, democracy, legitimacy, freedom. And sad to say it's been very successful in that regard, if in, if in no, um, no other. Okay, well let, let's go back a bit to what you first said. It's explicitly anti-democratic. Now, a lot of people will say, how can that be? We, we vote for MEPs, our MEPs go and sit in the European Parliament. Mm -hmm. this, it, might, it might be not as directly representative as perhaps the Westminster government, but nonetheless, that's a democracy. Um, Stalin's Soviet constitution of 1938 was the most perfectly democratic ever devised on on paper. Um, but Stalin ran an empire. The uh, European Union is an empire. Um, it has imperial ambitions uh, which extend beyond its, its present borders. It has the ambition to create a multinational army. Okay, but but who is like it then? If it is not the, when you talk about the EU as it, mm -hmm. if it is not the parliament, what is it? Uh, it, it increasingly is Angela Merkel. <laughs> um, <laughs> It, it, is, um, it is a nomenclatura. It's a nomenclatura consisting of, of politicians, but, but even more so of bureaucrats, of uh, bankers, of a certain number of academics, of media people. Uh, the European Council is um, the coming together of, uh, of ministers in a, in a specific area, in foreign affairs, in uh, economics or transport or whatever. The European Council is the summit at which the heads of state or government gather whenever they do and uh, um, stay up all night and drink coffee and come to um, so-called deals. Um, but but n neither of those two processes has any democratic legitimacy. Neither the formal decisions of the Council of the European Union nor the decisions of the, of the European Council. Um, the European Parliament uh, was rightly said by the German Federal Constitutional Court as long ago as 1993 uh, uh, as not having the potential to be the, the basis of a democratic system. And the reason the German uh, Constitutional Court said that was that for there to be a democratic system you need a demos. You need in effect a, a, a community which is neither on the one hand just a, a collection of um, disparate individuals or groups, cults, sects, tribes, gangs, regiments, religions, uh, or whatever, nor on the other hand um, an empire. And mm -hmm. um, where the European Union is heading is towards a sort of very unfortunate amalgam of the two models. It is heading towards an anarcho-imperial state of which there have been uh, several examples in history, perhaps one of the most pertinent being the Austro-Hungarian Empire. Um, and it was the clash of empires, and um, uh, particularly anarcho-imperial empires, that produced the First World War. Um, and it quite frankly, I mean, when one, one, one thinks of the disgusting, obscene horror of war, I, I don't know how people who are in favour of the European Union can sleep at night, because what they are doing is creating a, a, a set of social tensions uh, by eliminating a, a political sense of national identity. Mm -hmm. They force human beings, I'm not saying they do it deliberately, perhaps they do, but certainly it has we the effect 
of forcing human beings to seek a sense of belonging in something else, uh, whether it's an ethnic sense, a racial, a religious, linguistic, or whatever. And we're starting to see that, unfortunately, so that's happen in we Europe. Would, we would say that the rise of nationalism in various countries across Europe is a direct result of that, or the rise of various, what we would consider to be extreme political parties is a direct result of the way the EU is working to yes, eradicate cultural is. differences between nations. Well, I'm not sure it's seeking to eradicate cultural differences. What it's seeking to do is to, is to eradicate the right of people to order their own, mm. their own existence. And in doing so, you know, people say, well, why should I bother? I mean, what does, it, what does it mean to be Swedish anymore? What does it mean to be Danish? And they're two very good examples at the moment. Um, do I define my Swedishness by the fact that I have a Swedish government which um, uh, that Sweden makes its own laws and makes laws only for itself. No, that doesn't happen anymore. What am I? Oh, um, perhaps I'm white Caucasian. It is a plain, observable, undeniable fact that those attitudes are quite directly related to the European Union's attempt to abolish um, democratic legitimacy. There's going to be a crash then? There is going to be a crash. How soon? Um, I think it's coming quite close. Um, I remember five years ago saying it was going to be five or six years, and two years ago saying it was going to be 24 to 36 months, so I don't think I've departed from, from that timetable. The, the, okay. the, what is starting to happen, uh, and it's quite worrying, is, is that people, markets, are losing confidence in the ability of central banks to affect things.